Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'm going to show you the most important tips and tricks for your Xiaomi 14. By the way, do check out our video on best feature section where I talk about all the features offered by this phone. In this video, I'll just talk about the practical stuff. Now with that said, first let's look at some interesting stuff. First we have turn on torch. Now once you enable this feature, you can just double tap the power button anywhere, anytime to turn on the torch. I find it really handy. Next, we can also record calls automatically on this phone. You can enable this feature from these settings. Once you enable this toggle, you can record all the calls automatically from all unknown numbers. You also have other important settings over here. Now, whenever you make a call or answer a call, you will see a record option. If it's not visible, you can go to the more options on the call screen and you can find it there. Next, we have a quick shortcut to open the camera application. Once you enable this feature, whenever your phone is locked, you can double press the volume down button to quickly open the camera application. Even this shortcut is super handy. Next, on this phone, you can enable or disable haptic feedback. Personally, I would suggest you to enable it. And you can also change the intensity of the haptic engine from here. Next, we have a super awesome feature on this phone called the Ultra Battery Saver. Once you turn it on, your phone will restrict all the power consuming features on this phone and it just gives you some basic functionality like calls, SMS, and you can even select some applications. By doing this, you can drastically increase your phone's standby time. Let's say you just have 5% or 10% of battery left and you want your phone to run for 1 or 2 hours. In that case, you can turn on Ultra Battery Saver, still have access to basic applications and have a good standby time. Next, we can also add multiple faces for face unlock feature on this phone. You can do that from here. Unlike on other phones, you actually get to add two face IDs for this phone. Personally, I'll recommend you not to use this feature. Next, I'm going to show you floating windows. Now there are multiple ways to open floating windows. The easiest way is by using the sidebar. Now this feature is enabled by default while you're playing games or while watching videos, but normally you won't see the sidebar. So first let's enable sidebar and make it always show. Now you can see the sidebar on the edge of the screen, swipe from it and you'll see a list of applications. If you open any of the applications from here, they'll open up in a floating window. Once the window shows up, you can resize it, rearrange it, move it around, you can minimize it or maximize it at a full screen. If you click on the dots at the top, you get extra options to make the app go full screen, open split screen mode on the top or bottom, or just close the application. This is definitely a super awesome feature and can greatly increase your productivity. Now let's look at full screen gestures. Now you can enable the full screen gestures from these settings. And once you enable it, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold, for recent tabs, you can swipe from the left side or the right side to go back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner. And just like on iOS, you can just swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between applications. Next, we can also trigger Google Assistant by just using the power button. You just need to enable this toggle and then press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. Next, this phone also supports reverse wireless charging. You can actually enable the reverse wireless charging feature directly from the toggles. Even though it's a pretty cool feature, I would not recommend you to use it regularly. At most, you can use it to charge your Bluetooth headset, but that's all. Never try to directly charge others' phones. I think it's just not too effective. For Bluetooth headset and stuff in emergency cases, it's definitely pretty useful. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable the dark mode on this phone. So from settings, you can enable the dark mode and once you enable it, all the system UI elements change to the dark mode. Even stock apps like phone dialer, SMS application even change to the dark mode. Even the Google applications will automatically change to the dark mode. Now this dark mode definitely helps you save some battery, looks much more cooler and also affects your eyes less at night. From these settings, you can also schedule to automatically turn on and turn off dark mode at a specific time. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the screen refresh rate of your phone. This phone actually comes with a 90Hz refresh rate display. It's actually a good thing, but it also drains a battery a bit more. So for some reason, if you really don't care about the refresh rate of your display and want a little bit more better battery life, you can always switch back to the 60Hz. Personally, I would suggest you to put it at maximum for the best user experience. Next, I'm going to show you how to take pictures using palm gesture. So this feature has been added recently on the Xiaomi phones. You just need to enable this option and just show the palm to the front facing camera and your phone will automatically take a picture. It's not a big feature, but something you might definitely want to try. 
Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. By default, on any Android phone, if you want to take a screenshot, you can just press the volume down button and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, on this phone, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. Once you enable it, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a longer screenshot. So to take a longer screenshot, first we need to take a regular screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Now, once you take a screenshot, you will see a small pop-up preview. Just tap on scroll to start taking a long screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to use split screen mode on this phone or to say how to use two applications at the same time. For that, first go to the recent apps. Then click and hold on the application that you want to use in the split screen mode. Then select split screen. Now you can select the secondary app from the list below or you can go to the home screen and select the secondary app from the home screen. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable split screen mode for all the applications. By default, all the applications do not support split screen mode. So to fix that, you need to go to the settings about page, click on the MIUI version seven times. Once you're done, developer options will be enabled. Now go back to settings, additional settings and find developer options. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Now once you're done and just restart your phone and then you will be able to use all the applications in the split screen mode. Next, if you want to change the display sleep time or the display screen on time, you can do that from these settings. Normally you can find it in the display options on other phones, but it's a bit tricky on this phone. Next, if you want to display the memory usage on the recent apps page, you need to enable this particular toggle. And once you do that, every time you go to the recent apps page, you can check out the memory status. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to these settings and you can choose between any of these options. I would select percentage outside the icon. Similarly, if you want to display the network usage of your phone on the status bar, just enable this toggle. Once you're done, your phone will display the real-time network usage information on the status bar. Next, if you want to change the default launcher of your phone, you can do that from here. Let's say if you have installed any third-party launcher, say like the Nova launcher, you can change it from here. Going on next, if you're someone who's really concerned about privacy about your phone, and if you want to lock few applications on your phone, you can do that on this phone without installing any third-party applications. You can lock applications just like I've shown you in the preview. By the way, you can also have a different password for these locked applications from your phone's password, which is actually a pretty good thing. By the way, we can also use the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock features to unlock the locked applications. For that, we need to enable those options from settings. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you need to know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.